the D-segment sedan market is very competitive in Malaysia, with so many options to choose from. The Volkswagen Passat, however, is pretty much the only European option with a mainstream appeal, next to the usual Japanese suspects. We've already compared the top-spec 2.0-litre models against more premium rivals in our Driven Rep series, and it fared quite well there. Here, we have the 1.8-litre TSI, which is priced more closely towards the likes of the Honda Accord and Toyota Camry. This 1.8 TSI Comfort Line Plus retails for 186,000 ringgit. That's about 10% more than comparable models such as the Accord 2.4 and Camry 2.5 Hybrid. But with rebates, low interest rates, and free service packages offered by Volkswagen, you may be surprised how affordable this can be next to the Japanese options. There's also the 1.8 litre trendline version for just over 160,000 ringgit. But if you're looking for a Passat, you should at least go for the Comfort Line because this adds on quite a few items. Most important visually are the full LED headlamps instead of lame reflectors on the lower spec model. Plus, prettier 18 inch alloy wheels on this Plus model. Comfort Line trim also adds on keyless entry, powered leather seats, cruise control, reverse camera, and a powered boot, all of which are absolute essentials in this class. One of the Passat's key design features is how well it hides its bulk. At almost 4.8 meters, it's almost as long as the Toyota Camry and Honda Accord. But it doesn't really look all that big, does it? And the wheelbase? That's even longer than both of those cars. For such a long car, I think this is a very handsome, very elegantly styled car. It may not have the extra boldness of say the Mazda 6 and the Kia Optima, but this is the more classy approach, very classically Volkswagen. Moving inside, you get a clean and neat dashboard design, precisely as you'd expect from the German car maker. There's very little flash, but it's full of substance. Volkswagen has really nailed the ergonomics of this car. All the major controls are exactly where you want them to be. The touchscreen here has excellent, very easy to use interface, and the aircon controls are very logically arranged. The same goes for the driving position too. The level of adjustment available here is the best in class, so you can get really comfortable behind the wheel. As for the seats themselves, they're quite hard, very Germanic, but it's very well shaped, very supportive for long journeys. It also has powered lumbar adjustment and a memory function, which are not commonly found in this class. There's a massage function too, but to be honest, it's one of those gimmicks that you'll try once and never use again. Build quality is one of Volkswagen's key strengths, and the Passat is a very good example of that. In terms of perceived quality, this gets closer to the Mercedes-Benz C-Class than it is to the Honda Accord. The whole top of the dashboard is finished in this plush, soft-touch material, and fit and finish is absolutely faultless. But of course, as you get lower, the plastics get harder, as you can see here. But at least, they've kept the cheap, hard plastics to a minimum. On the downside, this variant doesn't get the full LCD Active Info display that's on the Passat 2.0 and Tiguan Highline models. And while the head unit does support Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, the blurry reverse camera display should really be better than this. On Comfortline models and up, you get Volkswagen's Park Assist, which supports parallel, perpendicular, and even forward in parking. But the thing is, it really takes its own sweet time, and if you really have a big problem parking a car with all-round sensors and a reverse camera, maybe you should just consider using Uber instead. As for rear passengers, you get a lot of space. It's absolutely massive back here, and the seats themselves are very well shaped, but more for two rather than three. You can also control the temperature back here, but not the fan speed. On the other hand, you don't get side window blinds like in most of its rivals, and even the rear sunshade is missing on this model. So if you're going to be sitting in the back here more than in front, there are better options elsewhere. The boot, however, is humongous at 586 litres. That's the biggest in class by far, around 30% larger than its Japanese rivals. And that's with a full-size spare tyre available under the floor too, which makes it even more impressive. As for safety, the Passat has a full 5-star Euro NCAP rating, 6 airbags and ESC. But unfortunately, it's short on active safety features like the Honda Sensing Suite on the Accord. So after all that, what's the new Passat like to drive? Well, long story short, it's a very solid performer. 
Up front is a 1.8 litre turbocharged direct injection petrol engine, making 180 PS and 250 Nm meters of torque. That is a full 20 PS more than the old B7 Passat and 5 more than the Honda Accord 2.4. Sending power to the front wheels is a 7-speed dry dual-clutch DSG transmission. Now, dry dual-clutch may set off some alarms to some people, but Volkswagen Malaysia insists that it has solved any issues with the system. To drive, this is as good as ever. DSG is still the very best in the business when it comes to dual-clutch transmissions, offering smooth and quick gear changes. This is much better than anything else that other brands with similar transmissions can offer. Tell you what, this is much better than Mercedes-Benz's wet dual clutch transmission by a big, big margin. Most of the time, DSG feels like a really good torque converter automatic, and that's a good thing. It's only when you're going really slowly, when you're pulling off from standstill, that there's a little bit of hesitancy from the throttle. This can get a little bit annoying at times, but after a few days, you'll get used to it. You'll just compensate with earlier pedal inputs. Other than that, the engine and transmission combo is excellent. On full throttle, it gets from 0 to 100 in just under 8 seconds. For a big car like this, that is rapid. There's almost zero need to use pedal shifters or even the sport mode because even the normal driving mode is good enough, quick enough, responsive enough for all your driving inputs. The thing is though, while the engine is more than happy to serve up high speeds, the chassis is less happy doing so. It's just not set up that way. Very few D-segment sedans are tuned to be fun to drive, and this is certainly not one of them. The Passat favours comfort over handling, and in this case, that is not a bad thing. The steering especially can feel a little bit light, especially off-centre when you're going hard through corners, so you're not going to feel 100% confident from behind the wheel. But having said that, grip levels are excellent, so it's certainly safe and competent, just not a lot of fun. The Passat is a lot more enjoyable when you're taking it easy. At the cruise, it's also comfortable, and the engine is very quiet too, barely ticking over at 2000 RPM when you're going at 110 km per hour. If there's a complaint, there's just a little bit too much road noise from the tyres, that spoils the experience a little bit, but other than that, it's fantastic. So on the whole, refinement is really, really good, and you'll struggle to find a better car in this class to eat up the miles in. As a D-segment sedan, that's much more important than driving fun, don't you think? So there you have it, the Volkswagen Passat 1.8 in Malaysia. Overall, it's a very solid performer on the move, and it has a very premium and practical interior inside. If you're looking for a classy D-segment sedan with European sophistication, you should definitely consider this one. So, over to you. Would you buy this car over Honda Accord, Toyota Camry, or Nissan Tiana? Let us know in the comments below. This is me, Hafri Shah, from paulsan.org. Thank you for watching.